It was 3 a.m. and my mother would have been appalled. I was standing behind a curtain with a man who looked like Buddy Holly and Jimi Hendrix's love child. <laughs> and I had just dropped my pants. When I showed up at El Mirage, a place I would eventually call the sleaziest place on earth, and asked to become a member, the dyke with slicked back hair and the rockabilly outfit who was sitting at the front desk told me that I needed to show my cock to a guy sitting behind me. I turned around and Buddy Jimmy put down the Charter House of Parma, really he did, and he led me behind the curtain. He glanced at my penis, nodded, and said loud enough for the rockabilly dyke to hear, it's all good. I pulled up my pants and he pulled back the curtain and I was allowed to become the newest member of El Mirage. You see, a cop would never show Buddy Jimmy his dick. At least that's the theory behind the application process. <laughs> I wish the theory had been behind it had been that Buddy Jimmy would be able to notice cheesy discharge, genital warts, bloody sores, or hungry mincing crabs, and reject the man. Is there another one? Oh, there. That's perfect. Yeah. Hunt hungry mincing crabs. Um, such beasties into the club, but no such luck. Nowadays, when I think about El Mirage, El Mirage, I start itching. <laughs> Writing this, my crotch started to burn. <laughs> For real, it really did. Um, I also started smiling. <laughs> when it's late at night and I have the happy buzz of beer, I think of bathhouses and sex clubs, and I think of El Mirage. While I had heard about them before, probably on an evening sto news story about them being closed down, I, just, I truly discovered the joy of bathhouses and sex clubs in the pages of a late 70s issue of Penthouse Forum, a magazine I stole regularly from my father and read under the bed sheets by the light of an actual flashlight. I was probably 13 when I read John Rishi's essay that was titled something along the lines of My Trip to a Bathhouse. John Rishi was hot in the 70s. Um, when you're living in Cincinnati in the mid-80s and you're a horny teenager and you have a hankering for dick and you have no idea how you're going to get that dick, the idea of a bathhouse, the simplicity, anonymity, and efficiency of men draped in towels wandering dark hallways finding another one or two who looks good and agreeable and then retiring to a little room with a little bed and then sucking and fucking the bejesus out of each other, it sounds like fucking heaven. <laughs> Even then, I knew that this fantasy had become a nightmare, or I had come to believe it had, as I absorbed the anti-sex, anti-gay AIDS hysteria that had, led the bathhouse, that had the bathhouses in San Francisco, New York, shut down, shuttered, and demonized as disco-themed petri dishes stinking of poppers lube and shame. Still, I imagined the long-gone bathhouse that Ricci described, and I had masturbatory material for years. Fifteen years later, I had a much more complex view about sex and sexuality, and I knew how to be safe and how to be sane. And I just moved around the corner to the afore uh, photographed place to a hideous and totally illegal sublet. And when I told a friend my address, he said, oh, that's around the corner from El Mirage. And another one said, which is next door to a Franciscan monastery. <laughs> which is kind of perfect, the first one said. It was kind of perfect. It was the an perfect antidote to the poison brewed by a night of drinking and rejection at one of the bars up the street. It was the perfect release from the stress and anger of my life, from the still smoldering smell of the World Trade Center's wreckage a mile south, from my ex-boyfriend and from unemployment. El Mirage was dark and small and hot, and it smelled of poppers and cum and ass and sweat and cigarette smoke. Or that's how I remember it. <laughs> the music wasn't loud. It wasn't the loud, crappy techno that you would hear at any other sex club in New York City. This is the East Village. They played rock and roll and not too terrible disco. Or that's how I remember it. Um, and the men, well, they ran from hideous to hipster to the hot to the horribly tweaking. If we were lucky, they looked like that. <laughs> I just miss the East Village so much. <laughs> Michael Musto wrote a column in the Village Voice trashing El Mirage as the most boring sex club in New York. This was the cartoon that ran with that column. It was drawn by someone who clearly had never been there. 
No one in the right mind would get in a sling like that. Um, I, um, I, I didn't understand it at all. I thought El Mirage was hot and was filthy. And that was why it was hot. <laughs> Thus the t-shirt. There were just three rooms. The lounge where they had generic soda and water, a couple of couches, and a clothing a clothes check that was manned by a skinny, naked except for his socks and Chuck Taylor All Stars NYU pantomime major. A little room downstairs with lockers and a sling in which there was always some guy with his legs in the air waiting to be impaled by whoever was willing and able. And a large playroom, which was about the size of two 7-Elevens, though much darker, and instead of hot dogs and a slushy machine, there were a bunch of easily sponged down cushions, another sling, a few chairs perfect for lounging during a blowjob, and a little maze that existed solely to have walls in which to drill glory holes. <laughs> The floors were filthy and slimy, and the bathrooms, though cleaned every half hour by Buddy Jimmy, were just as filthy, except they were better lit. So you could see all the streaks and spots and used condoms. It was kind of perfect. I love my people. You can make the bathhouses illegal. You can tell us that being dirty is dirty and evil and it's wrong and you can ignore us and you can let us die but you can't stop us from having sex even after closing El Mirage which they did in 2006 you can't stop us from having sex especially in the middle of the night especially when there's a big space and a lot of horny men and you need to get off and back on and back off and back on again yeah I got crabs there and gonorrhea but I also got to live out a fantasy born out of yellowed porn that I read under the covers at 3 a.m. when my mom thought I was asleep. 